All right, scientists, I want to introduce you to this animal here, if you don't know it already. This is called Drosophila melanogaster, and it's the fruit fly. It's a tiny fly widely used in genetic studies. Now, today we're going to look at the wild type, that means like the standard, no mutations, and this other one called ebony, because it has a mutation that makes it dark, right? So I have here my parental generation, my P generation, they are homozygous animals, and I'm gonna cross a wild type with an ebony fly, and I'm gonna obtain 55, 55 wild females and 55 wild males. Now I have my heterozygous generation, my F1 generation, and I'm going to do an F1 crossing, I'm gonna cross them, and what I obtain is 38 wild females, 16 ebony females, 43 wild males, and 17 ebony males. Now, I do not know what kind of allele this ebony is, but at first, it seems to me that the number of wild females and the wild males is pretty similar and the number of ebony females and the ebony males is also similar. Also, just by looking at this, it seems that we have way more wild types than ebony. So my guess, my hypothesis is that ebony is an autosomal recessive allele. All right, so my hypothesis is that ebony is an autosomal, that means it is not dependent on sex, it is not related to a sex chromosomes like X or Y, and it is recessive, that means it does not, it can only be expressed when there is no dominant allele. And we are going to test this with a chi-square test. So if you haven't watched the first video, the introduction to chi-square, I suggest you to pause this one, go back, watch the introduction to chi-square video, and then come back because we're going to skip some explanations. We're going to skip one step to make things quicker. So I'm making here my chi-square table. First, I'm going to put the categories. I have wild type female, ebony female, wild type male, ebony male. Then I'm going to put the observed values, the ones that I actually got from the crossing. Now I need my expected values, but what should I expect in this situation? Well, if E is an autosomal recessive allele, then I expect the heterozygous to look like this. Right, so three-fourths, 75%, I would expect to be dominant, and 25% I expect to be recessive. So I expect 75% dominant, but half of those would be female and half of those would be male if this allele has nothing to do with sex chromosomes. Same thing goes for our recessive. 25% should be recessive, but half of that should be male and the other half should be female. So how do I calculate here my expected values? Well, I expect 37.5% of the total to be wild type female. How many flies do I have in total? I have 38 plus 16 plus 47 plus 17. That is 114 flies total. So 37.5% of 114, that is 42.75. And you can ask, well, should I round this number? How is it possible to have 42.75? No one can be 0.75 fly, and you would be 
right, there is no such thing as 0 0.75 fly, but this is not the actual number of flies we have. This is the expected number. And the expected number should not be a roundup. Otherwise, this is going to throw off our statistics, right? So the same thing goes here. 37.5% of 114 is also 42.75 imaginary flies. 12.5% of 114 is 14.25. And these are my expected values. And if you add all these numbers together, you should have 114 as well. Now, we have here the observed minus expected squared divided by the expected. And if you don't know where this came from, go back, pause this video, go back to the introduction to chi-square video, and then come back here. So the values will be. And then I have all my differences squared divided by the expected. I can now calculate my chi-square value by adding all these numbers together. And my chi-square value will be right. Again, what do I do with this number now? I have to go to my chi-square table and take a look. Now, as always, my alpha level will be 0 0.05. That gives me a 95% interval of confidence. Now, how many degrees of freedom do I have? It's the number of categories minus one. How many categories do we have? One, two, three, four. 4 minus 1 equals 3. Again, if you don't know where this comes from, stop this, go back to the introduction to chi-square video, watch that, like the video, just because we're there, come back here, and then uh, continue with this one. So we look at the table and you see that the critical value for alpha 0.05 and three degrees of freedom is 7.81. And then I have to compare, is my chi-square larger than the critical value? No, it is not. My chi-square value is smaller than the critical value. That means I do not reject the hypothesis. That means I do not reject the hypothesis. It seems that E is really an autosomal recessive allele, and we have the demonstration right here.